Hey guys, my name is Cheeto. Welcome to the Culinary Studio at Jefferson Marketplace. Today I am here with Garrett, the executive chef of the Corner on Union. And today he's gonna show us a really awesome, really simple dish and I'll, I'll get to give it away. So we're just gonna do a classic preparation on an Italian chicken piccata. Mm. Uh, the basis of a chicken piccata is you're, uh, you just have a nice chicken breast, lightly dredged, not like a fried chicken, mm. but just like a little coated chicken and a, a white wine caper and lemon sauce. Mm. First thing you want to do is want to have your chicken breast mm. and you want to be mise and floss and you just want to have everything here ready to go for you when you're uh, about to get ready to cook. So you're going to need some butter, capers with a little caper juice, white pepper, kosher salt, Italian flat leaf parsley, lemon, a white wine of your choice, a pasta of your choice, I've got a fettuccine right here, and a little mixture, a three to one mixture of flour and cornstarch. Mm. What we want to do first is we want to take our chicken breast. Right here I've just got some uh, two sheets of cling wrap or ceram wrap, whatever, whatever's fine. And you just want to have one down and then you will just fold another one right over top of it, like so. Just get that nice and taut, and we just want to stay as clean as possible. Mm. A nice mallet. We're not just going to beat this to, you know, till it's thin as paper, but we're just going <laughs> to get it a little thinner, a little more tender. When you're pounding things out, it's helped to just let that weight of that ham uh, mallet, not hammer, weight of that mallet just get on that chicken. Otherwise it's going to be paper thin like Chef Garrett's talking about. Nice. So it looks like you can even get two entrees out of this, huh? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Now the reason why we do this is well, mm. you'll get a little more out of it yeah. and uh, the chicken will be a, a, more tender oh, and okay. it's going to cook a whole lot faster. That's why it helps to have your, your ingredients set up too because this is a quick recipe and so you don't want to be going in your cooler or reaching in and cutting up something while your chicken's burning. So it helps right. to be ready. So we're actually going to take this breast here and we're going to just cut this in half. We're just going to trim up the edges just a little bit here. All right, so now we just have these two pieces of breast, mm -hmm. and then you want to season throughout the whole cooking process. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to take some salt and white pepper here, and get this right on top of this guy. Mm -hmm. Now, Chef, is uh, white pepper preferable for this recipe, or is this like the classic way to, to make it? No, I am going to use white pepper specifically mm -hmm. because it's going to be going in our dredging mixture. Oh, okay. And when you're frying or pan frying mm -hmm. some chicken, I don't really want those black specks of That's black right. pepper to come out. I just want it to be a nice golden brown. Mm. Cool. So just a tiny bit of white pepper. Out too is that chef's going up about 20 inches from the top. That's the, the, the great That's way the to way, yeah. even distribution so that you don't have big chunks of black pepper. That can be pretty potent, right? yeah. especially white pepper. So then we're going to have our dredging mixture over here. Set this off the side. And we'll just get some salt in here. Now I said this was a three to one ratio of just all purpose flour mm -hmm. to cornstarch. Now I'd say I'd use a tablespoon of each in the, in the mixture. Mm. Just gonna give us a quick mix up. Mm. And then we're gonna just lightly dredge our mm. chicken in here. Just take the back of your hand, right where the joints meet, and we're just gonna press it down a little bit. Just get that. 
nice and dredged. We don't want this completely just drowning in flour. We're not making fried chicken. <laughs> we right. just want it to dredge, just a <laughs> small amount. And we'll just let these rest right here for mm -hmm. a second. Change your gloves, wash your hands. That's right. And one thing that uh, Chef Garrett did mention that we're dredging instead of doing a like a three-step battering process, which usually has flour, eggs, and then whatever breadcrumbs you're doing. Um, so right. this is a more sim simple way to, to give a nice coating so you get some texture on the outside of your piece of meat. Especially if it's uh, skinless too, that really helps. Absolutely. Yeah. So next thing we're gonna do here, let's go. We're gonna have our pan here on some uh, low heat. We're just gonna turn that up to maybe about medium heat. We've got some water going right here for our fettuccine. We're just gonna take this salt as well. Make sure we salt this water. We don't want our pasta to taste like nothing. Yes, right. We're gonna take quick pepper in there. A lot of people do that. I do it. Just a little more flavor. Now I wanna add a little bit of olive oil in our water that does a few things. It's gonna keep our pasta from sticking to each other and it's gonna keep our water from boiling over. Mm. The oil breaks the surface tension of the water mm. and it will foam over the pot. That's a good tip. We're just gonna have that on high, get that boiling. In our pan here for the chicken breasts, I'm just gonna take two pats of butter, let that go about its business, turn it down just a hair. I'm also gonna get in some oil in here. Mm as well. The butter is more for flavor, not just for a cooking oil. Yeah, that's right. Adding the olive oil in here is going to bring up the smoking point right. of this oil so my butter doesn't burn quite as quickly. Mm -hmm. Take that off the heat. Now we've got our chicken breasts here and we're just going to lay these right down. Move them around a little bit so they don't stick. We're gonna move that back on the onto the heat. Next, we're gonna take our fettuccine, and we're just gonna drop this right down into our boiling water. Move it around a little bit so that it doesn't stick. Chef Garrett today is using fresh pasta, but obviously you can use dry pasta, but fresh pasta is obviously going to taste a lot better, right? So. Yep, always. One thing you guys can see too is that the butter is slightly brown, which gives some really good toasty flavor. So there's a difference between like brown and, and burnt butter. And so Absolutely. that's why he put that oil in there to sort of buffer that yep. protect itself. So we want to make sure our, uh, our heat isn't too hot because we don't want to burn our chicken. We just want to make sure it's nice and golden brown and it's going to take a little while before we have cooked chicken versus the outside being, you know, possibly burnt. Yeah. We're just going to take this now, move it around a little bit and flip them over onto the other side. Oh, beautiful. Do we have nice golden brown? As your oil and your butter are in here with your flour, it's gonna to start to thicken up, which is good for your sauce, mm. but at times you might need to add a, a tad bit That's more oil. Yep. The reason for adding the oil is because all that flour is gonna get out there, start getting on the bottom of the pan, mm and it's gonna start to burn. Mm. Obviously flour is gonna burn, but more importantly, flour is a carbohydrate, and carbohydrates are the source of almost all burning mm. in any kind of right. cooking process. I think our, pasta is our chicken is doing nicely. 
pasta should be good to go. And we'll just uh, step over here. We'll just take it, put it right through the strainer here. That was we'll, a pretty quick process because it's fresh pasta, but typically your dry yeah. pastas will cook a little bit longer, maybe like I'd say two, three minutes, depending on how much you're cooking. Yep. So we're going to take this chicken, we'll flip it back over. We're going to take our capers, and now I take a little bit of the caper vinegar mm -hmm. in there, mm -hmm. and I just add it into this. We're just gonna, it'll pop a little bit, but don't be scared. Just let it happen. That's right. I like to use a spoon to just kind of incorporate everything. Mm -hmm. now you want to leave your chicken. This is a classic part of a chicken piccata. You leave your chicken in here while you're making the sauce. Oh, okay and just let it all come together. Mm. Soak up those juices. That's right. At this point, we're gonna have our lemon. Now, good tip, we have any kind of citrus fruit, really. If you're gonna juice it, we're just gonna take it and we're gonna roll it mm. and you get the most juice out of it as you can. Cut it right down the middle. I'm just gonna use my hand to catch Mm -hmm. The seeds here. That's already smelling really good. You got some good balance of acidity and fat with the butter, lemon, caper juice. It smells really good. Get all that lemon juice in there. Take out any seeds you might get in there. Buddy. <laughs> so let's move these around. We're gonna flip the chicken over mm. again. There we go. Mm. That's what we're looking for. We're gonna turn this heat back up just a tad. We're gonna add two more pats of butter in here. And now at this point, the butter is just to help emulsify the sauce, just mm. bond it with, yeah. uh, you know, with a lipid or a fat particle and keep the sauce together. Mm. And we want to have it at high enough heat so that bonding can happen properly. Mm. Once it's hot, hot enough, I'm just going to take a nice white wine. I'm using a Riesling right now. Mm. Any kind of white wine will be fine, really. I'd say probably about a quarter cup. At this point, we're just going to let our sauce come together and then reduce just a little bit. Mm. Now, Chef, I know you guys have a great selection of wine at the, the Corner on Union. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's it called? Can you tell us more, a little bit more about it, and what, do you, where do you source your wines, and maybe what kind right. of local wines you guys make? Um, our bar manager, Ray yeah. Ankeny, she yeah. does a really great job of trying yeah. to find wines you can't get around, yeah. you know, Ohio too much, mm. especially the Athens area. Um, right now I have a, this is actually one from the restaurant, it's a Huber mm. Riesling, mm -hmm. it's from Australia, 2016 I think, mm. but it's really great, mm -hmm. nice Riesling. The better the wine, the better the yeah, sauce. Yeah, that's right. A good rule of thumb is don't cook with a wine you wouldn't want to drink. That's true. But you don't have to go and get a $100 bottle of <laughs> wine right. to cook with either. That's right. So, oh, that sauce right. nice and thick there. Yep. Ooh. We're going to take our pasta, put it right, right on in here. Turn this guy down a little bit. Break it up, oh, break start work, working perfect. around. Now at this point, we're just gonna add a little salt and pepper and a little mm. 
flavor in there. Like I said, you want to season at every right. point in the cooking process. We just want the sauce to come together with the pasta. Yeah. Also, the pasta might be straining here a little bit, but it has all these starchy waters mm. on it, and that's just going to bring the sauce together. That's right. Carbohydrates are the best way to bind a sauce together. Mm -hmm. So, we got some uh, flat leaf Italian parsley right here. We're just going to take some of this. We're just going to give it a rough chop. Nothing crazy. Doesn't need to be a fine, you know, dust. <laughs> we want it to resemble parsley. That's right. Always use fresh parsley. There's yeah, no right. sense in yeah. using dry parsley. It has no flavor whatsoever. <laughs> that's right. I think just like cilantro, I've never, exactly. I've never seen it. I've seen dried cilantro, I've never seen it used before. No, it doesn't taste like anything. No. We're just gonna take this nice handful up in there. Take our tongs, mix us around here. I know the cameramen are getting hungry over here. It's I'm almost sure lunchtime. They are. <laughs> Turn our heat off. We're going to start with our pasta. Let's do it right here in the middle of the plate. Nice little pile if you can. Mm. One thing you guys are going to notice is that, that, that the chicken has retained that nice brown, golden brown color. That's because we had that dredge properly put on there, not too much flour. Because if you have too much flour, it'll usually come off because it'll be like a thick crust. So Absolutely. It's a little bit goes a long way. Look at that. Then we're just going to take a little bit left of our sauce here, actually with a spoon. Mm -hmm. Just come over top. Beautiful. And that'll that'll do it. Amazing. And that is just a classic, simple chicken piccata. Nice. Thanks for checking out this video. If you want to see more recipes or see what we're doing in the culinary studio, check out our Twitter handle, Facebook, and our main social media website at OU Dining. If you just uh, follow us on Instagram at Corner Union Athens, and you'll check out some things that we do down there. Thanks. <laughs>